Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Today in this video, we will discuss what Attorney Hogan revealed secret info on SEC's new fair notice attack. But before we start, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe before leaving. Also, hit that bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we will upload a new video. For now, let's get back to the video straight away. You wanna win an iPhone 12, maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? You decide. All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video, and leave a like on this video, and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. The US Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is required to provide Ripple with an email with a draft speech by William Hinman, former director of corporate finance at The Regulator. He stated that Ethereum is not a security. According to a lawyer, James Filan, this decision was made by Justice of the Peace, Sarah Netburn. Lawyers were talking about Hinman's speech at the Yahoo Finance Conference in June 2018 when a former official said that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities for various reasons. For several months now, the SEC and Ripple have argued about what information should be disclosed as part of the lawsuit. Lawyers for the fintech company demanded a series of documents, including internal SEC communication on the contents of speeches and other public communications. Commission officials insisted that these documents were subject to deliberative process privileges, DPP. This is a principle of law that allows the regulator, on the grounds of confidentiality, to refuse to disclose papers or testify. The judge agreed that the DPP indeed protected certain documents in her ruling. However, this principle cannot be applied to other recordings, particularly to an email with Hinman's speech. Netburn also ruled that the SEC must provide Ripple with certain records of meetings between agency employees and third parties. For example, the company will have access to a meeting transcript between officials and consensus in 2016. Judge Sarah Netburn has granted in part and denied in part Ripple's and individual defendants' motion to compel the SEC to provide the deliberative process privilege protects certain documents that the SEC has asserted. The ruling comes after a frustrating back and forth for nearly a year since the SEC repeatedly refused to deliver said documents despite the judge's orders. After a motion to compel, both parties got together in a telephone conference in which the judge decided to proceed with an in-camera review before making a deliberation. That deliberation arrived on January 14th. The court order includes discussing the applicable law for the deliberative process privilege, the context, and analogous situations. The privilege applies to the documents submitted for the in-camera review. The judge found that the SEC failed to establish that several sets of notes were protected. The deliberative process privilege is qualified and it must yield to higher interest where appropriate. To determine whether the disclosure is appropriate, notwithstanding the applicability of the privilege, courts consider the relevance of the evidence sought to be protected, the availability of other evidence, the seriousness of the litigation and the issue involved, the role of the government in the litigation, and the possibility of future timidity by government employees who will be forced to recognize that their secrets are viable. Under this analysis, the privileged documents need to be produced. Documents bear on Ripple's fair notice defense. Defendant's primary argument for relevance is that the documents bear on Ripple's fair notice defense and on whether Garlinghouse and Larson knowingly or recklessly assisted Ripple's alleged securities law violation, the court order stated. As the court has previously found, the fair notice defense focuses on the SEC's behavior and is an objective test of how a reasonable person would have interpreted the agency's conduct, that is, the agency's external behavior. Defendants have not established that the SEC's internal deliberations related to the digital asset space implicate the fair notice defense. None of those deliberations was public, so market participants could not interpret or rely on them to guide their behavior. The judge added that the defendants also argued that the documents are relevant to their assertion that the underlying law was so unclear even to the SEC that the individual defendants did not have the necessary state of mind for the SEC's aiding and abetting claims. Consequential nature of the litigation supports disclosure. In seriousness of litigation and issues involved, the court states that it expressly found that this case is unique, that the nature of the case involves significant policy decisions in our markets, and that the amount in controversy also is substantial, and that the public's interest in the resolution of this case is also quite significant. Some of the documents at issue go to the heart of the public's interest in the case. 
the court agrees with the defendants that the consequential nature of the litigation supports disclosure. As discussed below, however, the significance of the issues in this case cuts both ways. SEC employees need to be able to deliberate unsettled law in an emerging market without fearing that their communications will be subject to public scrutiny. On balance, this factor, therefore, weighs slightly but not strongly in favor of disclosure. Ripple gets email discussing Hinman's speech. The conclusion of the court order goes, defendant's motion is granted in part as to parts A, C through F, H through K, N, and P of entry one of appendix A, and granted in full as to entry nine of appendix A. To the extent the SEC believes discrete portions of the notes in entry one express the note taker's thinking or reflect deliberations or communications among SEC staff. The SEC may seek leave for limited redactions. Defendant's motion is otherwise denied. The SEC is further ordered to review its privilege log and produce, in full or in part, any documents previously withheld based on the privilege that would be inconsistent with this order. Attorney Jeremy Hogan commented on the ruling saying, Ripple did not do as well as I thought they would. Score, SEC 2. Ripple won. Ripple has been drifting down in recent weeks. After seeing $1.34 in the first half of November, XRP USD has been on a downward spiral, in part due to the current negative sentiment in the crypto space. Ripple's native token, XRP USD, is swapping hands at around $0.85 cents per token, a decline of about 15% in the last month alone. Meanwhile, the ongoing lawsuit filed by the SEC against Ripple Labs is on its first anniversary. The SEC alleges Ripple executives have sold $1.3 billion worth of unregistered XRP tokens since 2013. There is chatter about a possible outcome in favor of Ripple, yet it is hard to predict when and how the legal battle will end. If we witness a continued bear market in the crypto space, Ripple will likely be affected as well. Nonetheless, a potential end to Ripple's legal saga with the SEC could be a game changer for XRP USD. Therefore, today we take a closer look at the prospects for the altcoin, especially potential post-lawsuit opportunities, where Ripple stands. Despite the recent decline in legal worries, XRP is still up around 280% year-to-date YTD, from its early January 2021 level of 23.7 cents per token. Ripple had the strongest year ever, according to its chief executive officer, Brad Garlinghouse. As a result, XRP USD is among the top 10 cryptocurrencies in the world. It ranks as the eighth largest crypto with a market capitalization of over 40 billion. By comparison, in 2021, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two largest and widely known cryptos, returned over 65% and 415% respectively. Their market caps are around 914 billion and 453 billion. In addition, two emerging altcoins, Avalanche and Cardano, are up 3,240% and 652% YTD, with market caps of 26 billion and 46 billion. 2021 was a remarkable year for most digital assets. However, a recent Natixis Investment Manager survey finds cryptocurrencies the top contender for a major correction in 2022. More than half of the institutional investors polled anticipate a pullback in the widely popular virtual names. Ripple Labs launches new projects. The San Francisco-based technology company, Ripple Labs, developed Ripple for global payments and exchange network protocols. Its RippleNet platform, based on the distributed ledger database of XRP Ledger, XRPL, allows for faster and lower cost cross-border payments. The developers of XRP, the native token of the Ripple protocol, wants to make it one of the mainstream legacy payment systems like SWIFT, the current standard for international bank wires. Since its launch in 2012, Ripple has been expanding its user base. Currently over 1,500 stores and services, including MoneyGram International, Western Union, and Twitch, which Amazon owns, except XRP payments. Ripple has continued targeting global growth even amidst the legal headache with the SEC. For example, Ripple Liquidity Hub, which is accepted to become operational in the months ahead, will allow customers to find digital assets at optimized prices from a range of global exchanges, market makers, and over-the-counter desks by using smart order routing. The hub will initially give access to six cryptos, including BTC USD, ETH USD, Litecoin, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin Cash, and XRP USD. 
Also in mid-November, Lulu Exchange, a financial services provider based in the United Arab Emirates (UAE), announced cooperation with Pakistan-headquartered Bank Afala to integrate RippleNet for cross-border payments between the UAE and Pakistan. The bottom line on XRP USD. The debate on digital assets will be a long one to end. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum have already been designated as non-securities. Wall Street concurs that the outcome of the SEC lawsuit will likely create a regulatory impact for all cryptos. The fintech group is optimistic about the result. In a recent interview, CEO Brad Garlinghouse said he expected the lawsuit to wrap up sometime in 2022. What's more exciting for investors is that Ripple will possibly go forward with an initial public offering after the case is settled. Nonetheless, Ripple has recently been delisted on numerous platforms due to regulatory concerns. Most recently, BitBuy, a Canadian crypto exchange, announced that it would be delisting XRP USD effective January 13, 2022. As a result, a hashtag relist XRP campaign went viral on Twitter, but so far to no avail. XRP is poised to remain speculative and volatile for the foreseeable future. Interested readers might want to watch Ripple closely to allocate a small portion of their portfolios. That's it for today, guys. We will see you next time. Until then.